TSA confiscated a two-inch toy pistol from a boarding passenger sock monkey. True story. The TSA agent said that the toy pistol appeared so realistic that no one would be able to distinguish it from a real one. Following the incident, the TSA agent was promptly fired for not confiscating a sock monkey as well because it could easily have been confused for a real monkey. But the most tragic part of the story is, is that poor sock monkey sock hole appeared to have been savagely buggered. Phyllis May, the owner of the sock monkey, said that stitches will be required, along with lots of counseling. I just got back from a flight myself. It was hell. There was this one lady bitching and complaining about some TSA agent sticking his finger up her ass. That ungrateful little terrorist whore. These guys devote their entire lives to protecting us from terrorists. The least she could do is enjoy it. If it weren't for the TSA, I never would have found out about my swollen prostate and lump on one of my balls. Lucky for me, my inspecting agent used to be a doctor. He had a private practice, but had to shut it down because of Obamacare. Nice guy. He gave me a schedule at the airport for coordinating annual checkups. Speaking of probes, China successfully launched a lunar probe slated to land on the moon. A monumental first step towards converting the moon into the biggest Walmart the universe has ever seen. There's some theory floating around that all of modern humans descended out of Africa, which is total bullshit, of course, because everything that I've ever seen has come out of China. After watching all these videos of rabid zombies trampling over each other to whore Chinese trinkets on Black Friday, I am officially on board with the New World Order plan to exterminate 90% of humanity. Their savage behavior is just a preview of how ugly it's going to get when the globalist banksters collapse the economy. Uglier than Hillary Clinton, Dianne Feinstein, and Nancy Pelosi combined. Which reminds me of a medical tip I read on Dr. Oz's website, he said that staring at a picture of any of those traitorous hags is an effective antidote to counteracting Viagra-induced boners that last for more than six hours. But Dr. Oz warned that one of the potential side effects of this remedy is, is never being able to achieve an erection ever again. So you gotta weigh the pros and cons. In Russia, a guy nailed a scrotum to the ground as a form of protest against police brutality. The police responded by Chopping his balls off. Which seems excessive. Nailing your scrotum to the ground. I mean, if the guy had some Viagra, he wouldn't have needed a nail. Frankly, I'm not sure why China is asserting itself so aggressively against Japan. There's a darn good chance that the entire island of Japan will be converted into one big, uninhabitable radioactive rock in any moment. If I'm China, I'd sit back and place my bets on human error in the spent rod removal process at Fukushima. Perhaps when Japan has to evacuate its entire population, the global community can rally around bulldozing Palestine, I mean Israel, and evicting all the Israeli Nazis to some desert, or maybe even the moon once China finishes terraforming it into Walmart, so that the Japanese can move in out of sympathy. After all, this game plan proved very effective for the Israelis when they occupied Palestine. China announced it's going to stop accumulating U.S. dollars, which makes sense. China can clone anything. Pretty sure they can make toilet paper that looks like money just like the Federal Reserve does. Alan Greenspan, ex-chairman of the Federal Reserve, made a comment about Bitcoin, the speculative cryptocurrency that has emerged over the last few years. He said that in order for it to be worth something, it must be backed by something of value. Like what? The finger pressure of Zionist banksters pressing a keypad? I can type really big imaginary numbers too. Except that I wouldn't be a Jew about it and lend it out with attached interests so that I could control all of humanity through perpetual war and manufactured scarcity. I kid the Jews. In fact, I have a special place in my heart for all 6,000 Jews killed in the Holocaust. Some say it's 6 million. Yeah, right. Reminds me of the guy who brags about his penis size measured with a fisherman's ruler. Apparently, the Jews' proficiency with imaginary numbers doesn't end with just money creation. Oregon Senator Earl Blumenauer wants to raise the federal gas tax. He says it's because of a poorly funded transportation system. No, it's because you assholes took all the money you stole from us and spent it on endless war, bankster bailouts, and interest paid on the Fed's counterfeit money. I say, we the people need to support a bill 
that would trigger the immediate removal of any politician from office, I mean office, whose approval rating drops below 66.6%. We could call it Provision 666, because the beast knows its time is short. If they aren't doing a good job, they get fired immediately. I mean, if a dog groomer gets caught poking Snoopy in the back room, why should the boss have to wait four years to fire him? We the people should be able to get Snoopy fucker out of there ASAP. I can't say Snoopy fucker on public airwaves. That's because of the FCC, the Federal Communications Commission. They're a prudish organization funded with U.S. taxpayer dollars that finds people from using certain words that they deem offensive. Currently, the word uck is not on the restricted list of words, so if something really creeps you out, like censorship, you can still say uck. And I can still say as, as in, FCC is just as unnecessary as Nazi censorship. Which means I can still say, uck the FCC right up its Nazi asshole without getting fined. But I can't say the acronym FCC pronounced as a word because phonetically it's identical to fuck, one of the words cleansed from the English language by the FCC. That's deep.